uh, WPC clay program. <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> Did I do, <laughs> do I need to do one of these packets? No, it's fine. They're, I think they figured it out by now. <laughs> That's Okay, so now the way that 
you can also cone down is it's almost the reverse of coning up where my right hand was folding into my left hand. When you, could, when you cone down, you can also push the clay with the pad of your thumb, put your other thumb over top, and your right hand is folded in your left. And as you press down, the clay spreads into your fingers. And when the clay starts knocking these fingers, add a little pressure back and then release gently. Another way that you can um, center clay is doing this very localized pressure with your finger and just do one row and just press and just get that one row centered, okay? So that's another way of getting your, your clay coned up, coned up and centered. Okay, now we're gonna cone down and I'm not using my sponge with water because I have all this yummy slurry on my hands and it's creating a nice um, surface where my hands aren't going to dry. Now, the thing about making a chuck is they don't have a bottom. You can put a bottom in your chuck, but I'm not gonna have a bottom in my chuck. So what I'm gonna do is when I make my hole, I'm pressing down, but I'm gonna go all the way to the back Now, this is a really great um, practice for if you wanted to make bottomless forms that you would later alter and then add um, a slab foot to. So uh, now that I've gone all the way down to the back, when I open up, I have a risk of this form ovaling or ripping off. So you have to be really careful that when you're opening this donut, you let it go around one full rotation for each pull out. And you also want to press down, okay, as you're pulling out. So this is working as a unit, and you can even count it off if you want. One 1,000, okay, so I opened it up just a little bit. I did one rotation, and then I released. You can even do that if you want. Um, don't go too slow. If you go too slow, you also have a risk of the form ovaling. Open it up just a little bit more. Let everything catch up. Okay, so as I pull it open, I just pause, let everything kind of catch up. Everybody's on the same, uh, on the same ring, and then you can go one more. Okay, so you you want your chuck to have a wide base. If you make your chuck with a narrow base it's gonna to be top heavy, it's going to want to tip over. So you want it to have a nice flared bottom so that it is solid and um, <clears throat> it doesn't want to uh, tip over easily. Okay, then I'm going to cinch in the waist and then I'm gonna let the top flare. And depending on what the curve of your bottle is, that flare is going to let that bottle kind of lock down and let it find its happy place, okay? So I'm gonna just clean out anything that might have been left from opening up. And I'm going to do my first pull where I'm going to pinch the clay up as I'm helping direct that thumb. So we're just gonna come all the way up. Do not make your chuck super thin. Um, these are gonna be durable. They're gonna last a really long time. You don't wanna have a thin chuck, okay? It's not a terrible idea to make a chuck out of the same clay that you're using, just in case you would get a shard of the chuck stuck into your clay body. Um, I've never really had that happen, but it's not a terrible idea. I'm gonna press, come up, gently release, and flare. Okay, so this looks like a pretty good chuck. I'm gonna make sure that you, if you have any water on the inside, you wanna take it out. I might even come back and cinch this waist just a little bit more with three points of pressure, one, two, and three, and then give it a rib 
so that you help give it some stability, align those clay particles. I have a nice rounded top so that way it won't chip easily. These things get knocked around in the studio. Just cleaning up the bottom. Now at this point, if I cut it with my wire, it would drag and it would oval because there's no bottom. You want to wait until this form is soft leather hard. Um, if you wait too long when it's leather hard, it may be difficult to cut off the wheel head. You may end up wrapping the um, wire around your finger and it'll hurt really bad. So just let it dry until it's soft leather hard. And then I would put it back on the wheel and as it's spinning, I would go ahead and cut it off. Okay. And this is pretty much finished. Um, when you cut it off the wheel, you can sponge the bottom and clean it up, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. It's just it's like a, a, a workhorse trimming tool. So if I were if I were to make a series of bottles, um, I would make a few different chucks uh, and then get them bisque fired so I have them on hand for when I'm ready to um, trim my bottles. Okay, so fast forward, I have some chucks right here. <laughs> and um, what you want to do with your, there's a couple things with the chucks. You can practice with your chucks uh, tapping on center. We talked about tapping on center when we trim. These are great, especially if you're a teacher, you have a bunch of chucks uh, sitting around. They're really easy forms, uh, bisque fired forms for students to practice. And it's um, not a bad idea as a student just to take a piece of bisque wear, five minutes every class, go ahead and practice tapping on center, training your eye to catch that clay that's out of center, it'll make you a better thrower. Sometimes when you're pulling the clay, you have to do a centering pull and um, it'll help you train your eye to catch if you have um, clay left behind in the wall somewhere that's causing it to be out of center. Training your eye to be able to catch that thickness and pull it up through the form is really important. So uh, you might want to just practice. now. When you have a bisque form like this, um, the, this pottery makes a great mold because it's porous and clay um, placed on a bisque form will, the water will be pulled out of the clay into the bisque pottery and the clay will come off and it will be molded. Um, I like using bisque ware as a mold more than plaster because if this gets into your clay, it's not going to cause a pop out. Now, knowing that, if I try to take clay and strap this down onto the wheel head, it's, the clay is not going to stick to it, okay? So we have to add water and soak the bottom of your chuck uh, before you lock it down onto the wheel, okay? And I'm gonna grab a little ball of clay
center in that area. Remember when we're trimming, one way we know to stop if we don't hear the sound of the thickness of the clay, we can also press. And if we see a little bit of a bounce, we know it's time to stop that we're right where we want to be with the thickness. So if you make your chuck flared um, really well, it should fall down in, find a place that it's really happy and stay locked in. If when you're trimming your bottle, you end up um, getting uh, marks on the, the rim, or I'm sorry, if you end up getting like marks on your bottle impressions, you're probably using too small of a chunk, okay? So we want the neck to fit down in here, the neck is protected, and you just want to gently move this to where it's flat. Okay, so this is going to hold the form for me. Um, I won't get any kind of stress cracks on the rim of my bottle from having pressure added to that neck um, or the neck won't get distorted. Okay, so I'm going to rest my fingers here. You don't have to, it's just a habit of mine. Um, and I'm going to take the clay off the outside first. I didn't leave a lot of clay to trim in the bottom of my um, bottles because I make a lot of flat bottoms forms. Just because you make something flat bottom though doesn't mean it doesn't still have clay that needs to be taken away. A lot of times on the sides here we still need to flip it over and trim it. into a situation where you have really, really thick walls all the way down into the shoulder. It, it's best that this clay is pulled to the thinness that you want it up here, and we're only keeping our trimming localized down here to the foot. Again, you can tap or you can push and see if it's getting a little bit thin and then stop. I like to give my foot just a little bit of a curve right here. A lot of times um, I don't like using tongs or when I'm glazing, I like to hold the form wearing a glove, of course. And so having a little bit of a curve here at my um, foot uh, lets my fingers kind of lock in and I can dip the form um, into the bucket of glaze. Also, if you like dipping your forms in slip, you may want to um, think about uh, how wide your foot is and if your hand will hold it upside down. All right, so this is done and I'm just going to just take my sponge and just add a little bit of moisture. So my clay um, doesn't have grog in it, but it does have fire clay and so Sometimes uh, it will pull out and leave little pits, and I want to go ahead and get rid of those so they don't show up later in the glazing. I also like to press down here, uh, slightly causing a little bit of a indentation right in the middle of that foot. It makes it stronger, and it'll prevent the pot from rocking. So we have another form here and you can try different chucks to see. Sometimes they fit better. Actually, I kind of like this chuck better than this one. So I'm just going to pull it off. It's best to just switch, even though you might have your setup exactly how you like it. Just it, only takes a minute to switch and get it right. It's better than trimming your form in the wrong, wrong chuck. Okay, tapped it on center. So it's a good idea when 
when you're done with your chucks to take them to your sink and wash them off, scrub off all that dried clay. Keep them nice and clean. So when I'm trimming, I actually will angle my tools so that not the entire side of my trim tool is touching. When I, when I turn my tool, I get just sections of this blade. And then I will end up rotating it to the curve that I want. So I'm starting flat and then I'm turning it so that only maybe this section of my tool is touching and then go ahead and move it into that curve. Well, I didn't leave a lot of clay. I, yay me, but I wish I <laughs> had left some to trim out this area right here. So at this point, what I would do is make a cut in order to define my foot ring and then clean it out. I'm going to create a little bit of a indentation there, smooth. Let's go over the outside. Okay. And we're going to get ready to um, look at some spouts. Okay, so I'm going to have a um, set up up here that we're going to move to and talk about making spouts. I have a few spouts outside that are drying. I normally tell my students to not do that, but um, today uh, nothing in the studio was drying. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I have pottery outside drying. Okay. So you need to have, when you're making a spout, um, a, I really like just a, a brush uh, handle. So uh, when you have a really nice brush with a long handle, um, over time, the brush might not be any good anymore. Keep the handle, this is important. There's so many different ways of making a spout. If you ask 10 different potters, you're going to get 10 different answers. I'm going to cover one today. I'm gonna touch on another type of handle that you can make. Um, but uh, there's, there's many different ways. You can make them out of slab, you can throw them on the wheel, and you can hand build them using a quill, okay? So try different methods to figure out which one works best with your work. So I'm going to um, take my clay and um, just kind of um, um, roll it into a quill, but we're going to work one edge of the quill so that it tapers into a cone shape. Remember when you're rolling a quill, if the quill starts to get flat on one side, you can twist the quill like this and then just roll through. Okay, that's one method of removing that flat spot. You can also physically just find the corner uh, where it's creating a flat spot, get on that corner and just hold it, pivot it on that corner and kind of squishy it around and then roll through. I like using my needle tool to cut uh, the coils with. If you sometimes use a knife, the blade might not be long enough. Also, sometimes um, some of the federal knives have a really thick blade and it doesn't cut very clean. Um, it kind of drags the clay. So. so once we've created a cone shape, we want to tap it down and make the end thicker. Now, just from tapping it, um, it's going to start getting a little shorter and then you need to roll back through. Okay. So I have different sizes of spouts here and you're going to take your, um, 
your brush and you're going to put it into the middle of the clay. Now, you have to push the brush in as you, roll, as you roll the clay away from you and then stop, pick up, and bring it back towards you and roll away again. What you don't want to do is press down, okay? We're just pressing this brush through and then it's going to come out hopefully in the middle, okay? So I'm going to push it in as I roll away. Stop, pick up, stop, pick up, stop, pick up, okay. So this kind of came out a little bit to one side, but that's okay. So we have, we've pushed this through and now we're going to press down and roll it away, opening this spout up. So see, we're, uh, we're making, we're making the opening. So I'm going to press down and away and then stop. And so as I'm pressing down, I'm spreading the clay and I'm making the wall thinner. Sometimes the wall stays thicker here at the opening. So you might need to, instead of working from this side, put the um, paintbrush in the spout part and because this um, paintbrush, uh, it's so long, we want to kind of work on the edge of something so it can can go, it can follow this this direction, this angle. So I'm pressing down as I'm rolling it away, and that opens up there. Okay. So now that's the beginning of our spout. And then we're just gonna add a little water and you just wanna taper the edge. Okay. And that's going to give us a little bit of a curve that we're looking for. Now, another way that you can um, make a spout is once you have the shape that you were looking for, you can go ahead and bend Then this, then this all a piece of clay, and then mark the middle. And then we're going to cut it in half. Whoops, I'm gonna come out a little bit off there. That's okay. If you get a little bit sidetracked, it's okay. So once you have your two halves, oh, that wasn't very good. Let me do that again. <laughs> Shape your spout <laughs> and then mark your sides. It's better if it's a little bit soft leather hard, but that's okay. We'll get it. So I'm gonna cut it. two halves, I'm going to let those two halves dry and then I'm going to hollow them out and put the two halves back together. Okay? So I'm going to um, get the spouts outside and bring them back in that are drying and then we can talk about finishing. Okay? these are pretty perfect um, at this point uh, if you're hollowing out you might want to go ahead and draw lines so you know where you're hollowing out and you need a nice tool for that so you can use the rounded loop on the end of your Kemper. So you can see I'm hollowing out this 
spout. You don't want the spout to be too thin because when you glaze, the water from your glaze is going to absorb into the clay and then it will dry onto your work. If your spout is really super thin, it won't let the glaze um, dry on the surface. The spout will become so saturated with water and you will end up getting a crawling, uh, the glaze might crawl away at the spout. So you don't want it to be super paper thin, okay? So now that I have one side hollowed out, I just want to clean it up, make it nice and clean. All right, and now I'm going to hollow out the other side. You can tell this is drying. This is nice leather hard right now. It seems to work really well when you're cutting that you don't just drag the tool off of your form, but you actually remove the clay and it has some kind of a stop, okay? So like right now, it's pulling the clay and it's pushing into my thumb and stopping so it doesn't drag and alter the form. this one down onto the surface to get that very tip. Just going to smooth the clay and you can also use your knife to open up this spout tip a little bit more. So now what I'm going to do is um, score the two halves. Uh, today I just have my needle tool, which is fine. I don't have my serrated rib. Um, I was using it at home in my studio and uh, love my serrated rib. Can't live without it. So forgot that this morning, but that's okay. If you have a needle tool, just use it and just scratch the surface. I'm just going to add a little bit of um, water. You can add slurry if you want. Um, just add a little bit of some water here. It's dirty water, it's not fresh water. There's slurry in it. My clay is so forgiving. I think that's why I use it because I have a toddler and I'm a full-time teacher and I'm an artist. So I need forgiving clay. <laughs> okay, so the goal is that you've hollowed out the same thickness and we're just going to go back and forth, squishy, squishy, kind of feel the drag, press it together, back and forth. As I'm pressing it together, it's nice when you, when the water starts to kind of, and the, and the slurry water, comes out, that's good. You want to see that. You know you've got enough moisture in there. And so I'm pressing that together. And then I'm just going to smooth that seam. You could use your uh, serrated rib to go over that seam also if you wanted. And then um, using a brush, you can get um, on the inside and just smooth. And you can get a tool inside of there too and just kind of smooth that seam. Because I cut it 
to match. I don't have one wall that's thicker than the other. This seems really, 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 um, it's very subtle. So there's not a lot of extra clay to prevent the liquid from a nice pour out. I'm just kind of going over it, compressing a little bit. Use a brush to smooth. Okay. So now if I was going to add this spout or this one to my bottle, I want to cut the, the spout to match this angle. And I, I don't, I don't want the spout to be down here because um, liquid is coming out of the spout. So if the water, if the spout were here, you could only fill the bottle up to the lowest point of this pour. So this would be as low, this would be as much liquid as you can put in. So let's cut an angle. So find where the middle of that curve is and then we're going to mark it. So we're gonna cut a wedge out of our spout. So see that picked our spout up, okay? And then um, you'll see on this one where I you taper, the same as when you pull a handle, I tapered this spout here. I'm going to go ahead and give this a little bit of a nice, uh, almost like, I guess, canal. I, just a nice um, angle here where you can see the water starting to come out. Clean this out just a little bit. With your knife. Okay. And then use some water to, um, and, and your fingertips to kind of compress and clean up that cut that you just made. Okay. So put your spout on. I don't know if this is the best spout for this form, but it's a good demonstration. You guys need to work out your um, proportions uh, with your spout and your bottle. Okay, so go ahead and trace your spout. Now, thinking about the thickness of this wall, we don't want to cut that hole on this line. We want to leave enough clay that this spout has something to connect to. So draw a line. Don't just kind of eyeball it. At this point, you're making more complicated forms, so you need to spend more time. So create a game plan. Now you can cut, you know, uh, little holes. You can use a hole punch. You can twist a knife. But for the purposes of this um, bottle, I'm just gonna cut a hole out. Um, I'm not gonna put tea leaves in here. Uh, I'm, this would be for um, maybe wine. You can make really nice small ones that you'd have for oil and vinegar at your, your table. Okay. So now that I've cut that out, um, if it falls down in there, uh, it may not come out of the top. So you'd have to kind of shake it until you saw it and punch it with your needle tool and try to pull it out. Um, so now I'm just gonna clean this inside attachment here. I'm sorry, this inside cut. And uh, not that anybody would ever see it, but it bothers me knowing that it could be, have a bunch of clay burrs on it. Um, so I'm just gonna, Score this, score here, and then add water. Uh, now I just want to make sure everything's perfect. Okay, so I'm going to 
press it on. Make sure it's not turned, okay? So, so back and forth, squishy it on, and you'll start to feel the resist. Now, this is leather hard, so I can press on this wall and it's not going to collapse it. Don't rush your work. If it's not ready, then just go find another part of the process to work on. Maybe you need to go and do some glaze testing, um, pay your taxes, <laughs> um, every, anything else besides completing your form. So we start to see uh, the slurry come out and that's what we're looking for. I'm doing a little bit of localized pressure right here, kind of pressing down and getting this to spread just a little bit, okay? If it starts to collapse inward, then uh, maybe the, your wall is too thin, maybe your clay is too wet. You can also take a um, quill and uh, work it in. So we just wanna clean up this attachment. All right, so now we can add a um, handle and then we'll be done. So, uh, let's see. Um, I'm gonna roll my clay. So you uh, can think about um, different handles. Uh, here are those um, dried handles that I made a few weeks ago. And you can actually play with these and say, oh, well, you know, where do I want my handle? Um, so this is a great way of practicing getting a game plan together before you even start. I like putting my spout on before I put my handle on because the handle is a lot uh, more saturated with water and it can collapse but you can pick this up and the spout's not going to fall off. Okay, if you've attached it correctly. So I'm just gonna take a quill and make it a little thicker on one side. clay uh, in between your thumb and your finger and go back and forth back and forth flaring it So uh, remember that when you're pulling a handle, your thumb is pulling the clay against the first and third pad of your pointer finger. So you don't want it too thick. The thicker your handle is, um, it's going to let less fingers in. Make sure you always put your I know this sounds really ridiculous. Make sure you always put your handle right across from your spout because it's really easy <laughs> to uh, put it a little bit off to the side and then you have to cut it off, okay? You don't wanna leave it like that. All right. So I'm really pulling my, my thumb right here against this part of my finger. And then I go down the side with the web of my thumb to round this edge. And on this side, I'm really doing fingertip to thumb tip. Okay, I think we have it thin enough. Now on this one, I'm just going to hold, you, you always have to hold the handle and then I'm just gonna press right here and pop this up. And then tack it on. clean up the bottom. Okay, so um, looking at it, um, I don't, I don't 
know if uh, the this form has the same visual weight with all of the different elements. So this is a, kind of a really heavy spout. Um, it's not as elegant as this handle. So if I were to go back now looking at this, I would maybe make this spout a lot thinner. And so I might end up using a thinner um, a brush handle or I would use this method which is easy to get a lot very thin hand or thin spouts because you just hollow it out and I would probably um, give my uh, my neck some kind of a division between the neck and the, the rim the termination point to uh, let my handle feed off of so when you start making these forms with many different um, elements to them, uh, make maybe one or two, don't mass produce, because once you get one put together, you might wanna look at it, ask yourself what you would do differently next time, and then uh, do another three-dimensional sketch uh, before you start mass producing, okay? So does anyone have any questions for me today? Okay, so uh, we're gone next week uh, for uh, the July 4th break, and then I'll see you guys uh, when, when we get back uh, July 13th. Uh, the um, college's registration period for fall, early registration, is July 13th through the 30th, so if you're interested in classes, make sure that you contact me because we are social distancing and space will be limited. Okay, so thanks everyone.